So, Caroline, I just found this great book upstairs in the bookshop, and uh, happens I've already read it. It's fantastic. This book is amazing, and it's exactly what people need to hear going up to the election. This book, ladies and gentlemen, explodes the House of Commons, really. It's the truth of what goes on in there. And you will be shocked, as I was, and as Caroline has been, for years now, you know, and something needs to be done. So I'm here to help promote the book because I think it's a wonderful book. It's easy to read too. It's not loads of language you can't understand. You can read this book at bedtime and enjoy it. That's really kind. I mean, it was, um, it really was the, uh, the, the birth child of, of anger, to be honest. Um, that sense of seeing Westminster up front and just realizing how much needs to change if we're going to be able to get some decent policies coming out of the other end of it. And you and I have worked together before on things like uh, trying to challenge the, the badger cull um, mm. and just the, the difficulty of, of getting politicians to look at evidence, to get the government to act on public opinion. Um, you know, even yeah. when there have been polls and so forth showing just how many people, uh, for example, oppose the, the badger cull, how much evidence there is to suggest that the badger cull is, uh, is counterproductive as well as being incredibly cruel. Yeah. And it just feels so frustrating that there doesn't seem to be a forum in Parliament where, although there are individual MPs from all parties who are supportive mm. of the cause, but as an institution, it just doesn't seem to be fit for looking at evidence and making sensible policy. That's my impression too. I was shocked and quite disgusted really the more I saw because really it's not democracy at work at all, especially when the whips come in and force politicians to vote against their conscience and mm. against the wishes of their constituents. It's outrageous really. So I would like to see a massive shake-up you know, and we need MPs like this. Here is a woman who acts according to her conscience, never sleeps, <laughs> does... <laughs> pay attention to her constituents, listens to people, and engages in proper debate. But I've seen, I mean, and I would agree with you, there's lots of good MPs in there. Well, there's a few. Mm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a number of good MPs of all parties mm. in there, decent men and women who, who act according to their conscience. But there's a whole raft of politicians who really don't. You know, they are not representing you. They will be in the bar when the debate's going on and they'll all shuffle down when the bell goes to, to vote and they don't even know what they're voting for. I mean, mm. it's a pitiful state of affairs. It has to be changed. And if you read this book, you'll get an idea of just how corrupt it all is. It's not just these issues, it's other issues as well. It's like business interests influence, influencing the way MPs vote. It's outrageous. Um, yes, I mean, the the... The, the one opportunity that MPs had to try to address that with the uh, lobbying and transparency bill is just so ironic how that was completely turned around so that instead of using that bill to properly regulate corporate lobbyists, instead it's been turned around. So what it's doing is clamping down on legitimate civil society, non-government organisations. You know, they are now the ones in the frame who are having to kind of change the way they work, uh, whereas most corporate lobbyists aren't even touched by the bill. So it feels like even when there's an opportunity to do something good, <laughs> the no. government manages to turn it around to make it, uh, you know, completely the opposite of what was intended.